Hello, I'm Matthew Rice, and it's a pleasure to be able to read some poems to you, wherever you're watching this in the world. Um, I'm going to start by reading three short poems from my debut collection, The Last Weather Observer, and then I'll read um, a few poems which uh, haven't been published yet that are a little bit newer. Bear. We were out on our own, out of our own ken. The season was cold and grey as a cereal bowl. Those were the days when grass root was as caviar, when anything but the immediate bordered on futile. At night, the trees were lunatics in straitjackets. We lay on our backs and shared the fur, stared into the tree-tipped portal of dark and couldn't help them. We couldn't help anyone or anything, not anymore. Not since that distant avalanche, tipping its melee of white noise, had had our eyes so far away, so imperceptibly on the past, a future reaching quietly for its pelt. What the heck? Modest Petrovich Mizorsky, how does bear become bald? I'm so uninformed. Once upon a time, Woody Harrelson started a prison riot to the chaos of your tone poem. Lawyers and bankers jog on a gem and the cat dances, so many blood-curdled harmonies. Oh, Modest Mizorsky, the obscene praises, the far-off shadow perched on high ledges, dancing above futile flamingo screams. The smallest thing, as small as the silence in the warehouse corridor, the pigeon, wings out, breast down on the concrete, eyes buttonholed in death, and its mate that won't budge, that doesn't even flinch when I approach. Little Dante's. A kitchen window is not without its multitudes, a draining board's gleaming skyline, the mystery of an aloe's favouring sun or moon, and the witching hour is inaccurate. But tonight, my little Dante's of hurt go stepping through shades of memory, and it's the forgotten which death unmakes, since in every gull is the soul of a drowned sailor, for whose sake I leave scintillas of grape, a youngster alone and flightless in its lime green poop. You need only inherit the morning, little one, but to fence you off would only fence you in. So while tomorrow musters itself, May tonight equip you with its small hansels. May the big Tom languish sleepily in the hammock of himself. May you summon the fortunes of one who loved an albatross. Elephants. Even they keep at least two feet on the ground. And the deep earth's seismic signals puzzle clairvoyant through their mystical shoulders. To the following herd, the matriarch carries the horizon. She says, who needs a watering hole when you can get wasted on the fermented fruit of the marula tree and make memories as far-fetched as stories? Then, to kill a few miles, tells the one they all love about God opening the fridge onto Siberia, where man hunted mammoth, as if time was no longer his, or as it was, or could be. Two point two million acres of solitude. I wanted to tell you I'm grateful for the help you never had, which became my help. The way a geyser is always ready to rumble. The way Yellowstone has a fire in its heart. 
the way a bison's head is massive with snow and weary. The way only one element of history is the six months it used for a herd to pass. The subalpine fur whose blunt needles attest to the truth winter makes work of. The failing rituals inevitable with violence. The way summer's tunic, on the other hand, is always consummate. The way relentlessness is the search for grazing zones rich with what second chances are made of. The newborn on wobbly legs, oblivious to the struggle. The grizzlies, notorious in their good motherhood. And the raven, common to it all. I wanted to tell you I'm grateful the way a peloton of buffalo, unwise to itself as grief, borrows the shadow in which the sun is perfected. Tiny Creatures Tiny creatures obscured by dusk move alien over the rocks, an empty beer can their little possible Alamo. Who am I to shudder at their existence? Something ticks out of time, the Morse code of bats, and among the stones the water burbles. These days the air is rarer than before. There's nothing can be said of the stars under which these words are appearing, save to say they too are appearing, dying, and so very, very late. And all this as the Stena line carried its portals of light just now, its knots leisurely with distance, overnighters home strange from the mainland, stepping off the gangplank into the world. The Forger Pillars of rain crumble over the town, distant as knowledge, and the shillers with wonder in their chisels divine likenesses from the genuine thing. The ruined legs of Ramesses, where a carpenter bee lands and sanitizes, and someone with secrecy in her name bears into the home of one with tools of polished bone the face of Nefertiti, to be rendered as Tutmos rendered her, under the son of the pharaoh. So the rising and vanishing of several moons she, to a gaze of stucco and Nefertiti twinned out of limestone, where the forger holds court over the left eye's abandoned quartz, as the master sculptor had done, or is said to have done. And this is the last poem I'll read. Thank you very much for listening. Roswell. The heart beats its little Roswells, and Roswell is today and tomorrow, and for the people of Roswell, it's 1947. And the government is Roswell, and the private lives of the public are. The runner's knee of the runner's pain is Roswell, and the mind is. The future is Roswell, and the past goes to 1947. The nuclear silo is Roswell, and all the messages are and self-contained plasmas are Roswell, and the deserts are, and the world is, and the hand is closer to midnight than ever before. <laughs>